Yeah, I'm Verly Suggs, I'm the host of the show, and I have with me my special guest this morning. I have Kevin Kosick from the IT department from the city of East Where's Chicago, and going? we have Milton Reed, Where's he's the economic uh, development uh -huh. consultant. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Great, great. Well, wonderful things are always happening no in the city of East Chicago, and we're here to talk about one of the um, newest things that are happening, and that is the laying of fiber optic technology and hot spots in the city of East Chicago. So Kevin, you're the director of IT. Tell us what that means for the city of East Chicago. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, about, um, I believe it was in July that we, um, that we, uh, in July, at the end of July, we completed the uh, construction of uh, about 17 miles of uh, about 17 miles of uh, fiber optic cable throughout the city, and uh, uh, since then, the uh, the city itself, with our communications and uh, uh, the networking between uh, all of our facilities and so forth, um, that investment has paid great dividends with that alone. Um, and we also uh, were able to um, uh, have some of that fiber uh, made available. To uh, to the public um, for uh, for use, and uh, so it's been uh, it's been a long time coming, but um, I feel that it's uh, it's been a great investment for the city, and uh, the the benefits are definitely going to start uh, uh, showing proof of that investment. Well, that's really fantastic. Now there might be people out there who are not really understanding what fiber optics are and Wi-Fi, and there are a lot of people who just haven't caught up. So explain how that technology uh, happens, and how were they able to lay it under the streets of East Chicago? Well, the construction was, uh, we, we constructed it in phases, and uh, uh, just about all the technology was uh, and hardware was laid with uh, directional boring of piping uh, throughout the city, and uh, the um, the cable was installed throughout that pipe, um, and the the big benefit uh, of that is uh, fiber optic is basically bandwidth, meaning uh, being able to push a lot of data uh, through uh, two pieces of glass at very high rates of speed. Kind of in a nutshell, you know, the benefit of fiber optic communication uh, versus copper communication or uh, um, you know, before that, uh, for example, um, some of our city facilities, we communicated with uh, least uh, dedicated copper data lines, and we had to lease those through uh, through AT and T. And so now, with the with the fiber communication, uh, we've been able to replace that and not have cost of, of uh, leasing uh, uh, data lines. And the speed is a uh, hundredfold. It just, you know, tremendously uh, um, transporting data at much uh, higher rate of speed. Now, is this owned by the city or is it leased from somewhere else? No, we, we own 100% of this network. Fantastic. Now, Milton, tell us where economic development comes in with this. Well, before I go to the economic development, I want to just back up a little bit and, and it kind of tell the audience uh, this is not a small task that has been accomplished. The FCC several years ago started programs, started encouraging to some extent uh, municipal-owned fibers and what you can do with municipal-owned fiber. Um, and this is East Chicago is one of the few uh, cities in the in the United States, and I know definitely the first in its area to have a fiber loop. And the fiber loop means that you essentially can do almost the same thing that any major internet service provider can do, an AT&T, a Comcast. So the loop system is that if the system breaks in one place, it literally loops the other direction and you keep your service. So your network is up all of the time. And so um, outside of the significant cost reduction, what does this mean to the normal person? That, and I think that's the question that everyone needs to understand. This is the first step in bridging the digital divide for universal uh, internet access to all of our residents and the benefits of the information technology 
uh, that we have. Does this mean that, say, if you're paying for internet from a Comcast or some other company that you'll now be able to get it through the city of East Chicago, or is it only in certain hotspots? Well, we, it's, it's only in certain hotspots. So the city of East Chicago at this point is not going to become an internet service provider, okay. but we have the same what we call backbone. We have the same infrastructure so that we could. So you have the capacity to we, do it. We have the capacity to do that if we so chose to. Now, we aren't going to be in that business right now. We look at it as like um, when you provide benefits to a park, for example, when you put in park equipment. Now, a part of that park equipment is going to be free Wi-Fi. So you're sitting in the park. You're able to access Wi-Fi right there. That, you is, know, that is absolutely that's right. And, and it's high speed. So go ahead, Kevin. No, I, I was just going to touch on that. Another major investment the city's made um, is uh, we just completed a uh, $1.5 million investment of uh, roughly <clears throat> excuse me, 700 um high-speed, high-definition security cameras that are placed throughout the entire city. And those cameras are um, communicating, if you will, through that fiber. Uh, if the city were to have to, uh, uh, um, to pay for those communication services that we have out there, um, it, you know, you'd be talking tens of thousands of dollars a year that you'd have to spend on those communications. So now through um, you having your own system, it links in directly and now you can smile you're on candy camera because no matter what's going on it's being caught on camera in the city of east chicago now. right we've we've strategically placed them throughout the city um in our city facilities uh at major intersections through the city and through all of our parks and we continue to grow on that network with uh cameras being um installed in uh, various neighborhoods throughout the city so um it's it's our mayor's always been committed to investing dollars in public safety. And this project was a, a major investment in following that, you know, following that. This uh, is amazing. We're also joined by Steve Segura. Uh, good morning, Steve. Good morning. I'm not sure if everyone can hear me. Yeah, yeah we hear, okay, I hear great. it. Uh -huh, great. You know what? And, and uh, the mayor's not trying to be big brother on everybody. You know, he made, he made that clear in our town hall meeting. But... And I'm gonna give you a perfect example of how these cameras are, are so beneficial. There was a a semi trailer that went down Indianapolis Boulevard and totally ripped this girl's door off and almost, you know, took her out in the, in the process. I guess how we found the guy through these cameras. Through these cameras, you know. No, I think cameras like are wonderful. I mean, you, you know, know, Big Brother or not, uh, it cuts down on crime. It solves crime much faster. And a deterrent. Exactly. How did they find the bomber in Austin? They were able to look at cameras. So no, I am supportive of cameras, 100. So, so when it comes to when it comes to technology, many people should understand. Uh, East Chicago, through Mayor Anthony Copeland, is on the forefront of what you will see eventually all municipalities uh, do. Uh, I, I I somewhat. But let's reiterate: East Chicago is the first city in the region to have this. Yes, the the first city. You know, other people have talked about it. Other people have planned it, but. We had a comprehensive strategy for years. So in essence, anytime we do a street construction project, we automatically, as part of the specs, put in the fiber conduit. Pennies on a dollar when you have to, the, the sidewalk is already open, right. and you lay the conduit versus if you have to bust it up. So because we have a balanced budget, because we did so many street projects over Mayor Copeland's tenure, that's why we have fiber and conduit everywhere. And that's why Kevin was able to... Uh, Kevin was able to complete the loop. I mean, major investment is already returning uh, multiple times over in many different ways. We at, out at the lakefront, I'll just kind of somewhat plug the lakefront. I'm a former Port Authority member is that, you know, it's going to be a destination for more than just the water. You know, you can go out there, uh, you know, in, in October, it's going to be like a park. It's George Park Beach, not just George Beach. And so all of these things you can do are open and access. And we're saying, hey, come on out, take a new look at us. And this is the technology part of that. Right. Another investment, if you will, that um, the mayor kind of had the foresight to uh, invest in. Um, you hear every day on the news uh, just recently in the city of Chicago, they made it known that in a couple of their precincts on the south side, they invested big dollars in shot spotters which is the technology of uh, uh, when shots are fired, it picks up uh, the, the tone, if you will, of the shot, and it triangulates where that's coming from and pinpoints 
you know, uh, in reports to the officers that this is where it's happening. Right. Um, and that's a it's a big deal. It's great technology. Our mayor had the foresight four years ago to invest in Shot Spotter. East Chicago's had Shot Spotter for four years now. So um, the the mindset of spending the dollars in you know public safety and technology, um, uh, they're right on top of that. Well, it also helps that you do have a balanced budget and you have this extra money to spend on this this innovative technology. Right. The the fiber network. Um, people ask how that was paid for, and it was. Uh, it was through uh, through gaming dollars. It was infrastructure improvement. Uh, it wasn't, you know, general fund. It wasn't tax dollars. It was purely uh, gaming dollars that the mayor was able to invest in uh, for that uh, for that project. Now, when it comes to new businesses coming into the city of East Chicago, uh, does this fiber technology help to entice them? Yes, it does, and and we are uh, beginning to to market it. What we have done is we have. Uh, actually hired a company and Kevin can talk a little bit more about this but we we've entered an agreement with the company to just uh, manage the network and now will they, that be net Nico yes or, correct okay. and, and mm-hmm. they will they will offer businesses the what we call final mile and they will become the ISP they'll have a variety of products and services at a competitive rate they are uh, considered a, a, an ISP provider as we get, we're not in that business so any business coming in you can get you know high speed Right, you know, any new building that the city does. You know, we're in the middle of our revitalization. Kevin and I talked to you about yesterday. Uh, the Fitzsimmons Project, totally revitalization of 3735 Main Street. So Fitzsimmons being the old former furniture store that, in the corner right. there. Yeah, that is uh, coming so down. what is the Fitzsimmons Project? <laughs> Tell me. I'm well, excited. Uh, very, <laughs> very exciting project. That project is coming down. It's going to be a mixed-use commercial on the bottom and very nice um, uh, townhomes on the top and along 138th Street. So this is probably about a $4 million project. And, and again, Kevin uh, just probably Monday that we've got to make sure that we have the fiber coming into the building so all of those businesses on the ground floor will have high speed uh, through fiber connection and as well as the residents you know everybody is going to be on some type of fiber network at some point in the future it's the city of East Chicago and this business have the availability to do that now. well that's interesting because East Chicago was the first city in the area to get the new McDonald's the new yeah. high-tech McDonald's and now I'm waiting for the Starbucks to come Yes. Is that on the horizon, or? <laughs> well, yes. Oh, any, any, anything is nothing is off the horizon. We have great expectations, and again, when you go through revitalization, of course, you demolish everything. And then, from an economic development point of view, you talk to developers and say, "How can we strategically build for what's next?" And if you look throughout the city, I mean, again, along all of our main corridors, we have the technology access, we have the camera access, and we just have things that are more attractive to business. So, when you talk about the Fitzsimmons project, is that in? <clears throat> encompass the whole strip of Main Street between Broadway and 138th or just that corner? Just that corner. So uh, there are about three lots there. So it's Fitzsimmons, the building next to Fitzsimmons, and then there was the little gangway plaza that was there. So it's, it's going to be uh, So the little size. former grocery store that yes, was there and right. all there. that. Familiar with these of Chicago. course. So all of that is coming down. We received demolition bids last Tuesday. Demolition is going to start uh, here pretty soon. We get the permits and everything in place. They will be ready for it. And did they have asbestos? Do they have to remediate yes, any of all, that? All, all of that, that is taking place. All of that is part of the bid. Right. So part of the project. We never leave asbestos tank. That's great. Now, will, the, will the look and feel be similar to what's on Broadway? Very similar. Well, I tell you what, in this particular project, we're going to keep some of the aesthetic value of the old Fitzsimmons uh, building. And it's still going to use that name, Fitzsimmons? Uh, or we no. call it the Fitzsimmons Project. Yeah, okay, but, we'll, but we'll maybe not the Fitzsimmons. <laughs> okay, I, I, I do it. call it the Fitzsimmons Project. Uh-huh. Uh, but we're keeping some of that old architecture. It can be replicated in a modern way and not the same cost. So it'll have a good look and feel. It's going to be uh, brand new right across from a Unity Plaza where there was another million dollar investment, uh, you know, kind of somewhat authored by the Mayor Anthony Copeland through the RDA fund. So, now, is Unity Plaza one of the hot spots? Yes. We, last year, uh, in the fall, we, we experimented, if you will, with a couple of locations that we put uh, free Wi-Fi and Unity Plaza, the, uh, the, the splash pad area at the uh, marina, and uh, a couple of the parks, we, uh, we had Wi-Fi there. And um, it was, you know, we're able to see how much activity and so forth. And uh, 
How do you make people aware that when they go in this park that Wi-Fi is available? Well, there, for one, there's signage. There it, it does uh-huh. let you know that there are hotspots there, and uh, they can connect, you know, to the network. And do they need a password, or it's basically just no? What an it open... is, what you do is, when you connect, you're forced to agree to terms and conditions. Mm-hmm. And when you agree to terms and conditions, you're more or less registering yourself as a, a node on that network. So basically, then any hotspot in the city you go to, you're already registered. You can connect automatically yes well you would if you were using it at the plaza and then you went to the lakefront uh you would you would have to re-register oh, okay. as a, when you go to you know because that's the first thing that comes up once you connect uh you choose that that um that broadcast or that id and uh, there is no passcode but that's the first thing that comes up that you have to agree to to uh the terms and conditions to move forward and utilize the service right so we were with a we were with the Card the football team about a week ago, right, Steve? I think. Yep. And we started telling them, say, hey, guys, free Wi Fi is here. And they, they just lit up, you know, like saying, really? Okay, yeah, well, we're, we're on. We're going to hang out there. Because, again, you have your device. You just, I mean, it's what everyone's doing. That's fantastic. What else is happening in the city of East Chicago? Oh, man. I mean, there's so much. And, of course, we only have a half hour show to get it all in, but we try as much well as we can to do that and steve we know you do such a great job with multimedia making sure the message gets out that the web pages for the city are maintained and people are aware well the party train is about to begin in east chicago that's for sure because uh this weekend we're kicking it off with the annual easter egg hunt brought to you by the parks and recreation department and of course mayor anthony copeland um it'll be saturday at washington park uh that's at 142nd and parish and it starts at 10 a.m. If we do have bad weather for some, and I think we might. Uh, yeah, we'll be, yeah, we'll Talking be pushing about snow, it possibly. <laughs> yeah, go if we have bad right. weather, we'll be pushing it to the Bessie Owen Center. Okay, so to go to indoor. Yeah, 4001 Alexander Avenue. It's for ages 3 to 13. So make sure, you know, you come on down. Uh, they have plenty of little raffles and, and Easter Bunny pictures. and Really a nice time. Really a nice time. Uh, I, I love seeing all the families. We get hundreds of hundreds of kids that come out to this event annually so we'll see you this saturday march 24th and we're gonna have the cinco de mayo event at the lakefront at the marina except it's gonna be on the fourth so friday instead of saturday we'll have our cinco de mayo celebration beginning around 7 p.m there's gonna be uh music mariachis food um there'll be a dj and um we're looking to have a good good time like in the uh, band too right Steve if I'm that's kind of up in the air right now we're trying to see because it's a lot already that we're doing that sure. trying to squeeze into that one night okay so um we'll, we'll, we'll see how that okay plays out in this next so week. the mariachis for sure and then possibly oh, DJ yeah. with the music still playing and tacos and lots of food to buy yes how many yes. different vendors are going to be there do you know well I mean there's just going to be one food vendor one food because vendor okay small, small space and, um, um, so you know but they'll have something to please all yeah. okay great oh, yeah, yeah, the special be... events committee has been working hard on putting the cabin together for the year and all of that will be uh, published on Facebook and the website right, right. and and speaking of Jarrell's Beach I want to uh, just bounce back for a second we have a new website and that's Jarrell's uh, Park beach.com and you spell and that for those who may not be uh, familiar g what is it j j j e o r s e i can never remember it's the e or the o j e o r s e i i admit i think i spelled it wrong once myself yeah, i'm a terrible speller everyone always makes fun of me i won't admit to that not, not, not i won't admit to it either oh man but um so yeah. say it again it's joe's joe's park beach.com and we'll be posting up stuff happening around the, the lakefront there right. also. Uh, we're also working on a new website for Fusic, uh, FusicFest.com. That's what it man out. Yeah, that's yeah. That's so all of our entertainment that will be coming up for this uh, year's festival will be posted shortly. And last year was the first year for this festival, and yeah, it, was it was a huge success. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It was a, very, a lot of fun. nice crowds. It was perfect weather. Everything went very, very well for the fest. Fantastic. Um, and again, I, I know we're on the radio, but our time is running out, but I still just always have to give our mayor, Anthony Copeland, credit for all of this. He lets his staff and his consultants um, advise him and put these programs together. He gives 100% support for making these things roll out and happen. It's, the quality of life is definitely improving along with the cleanliness. I mean, we're having our town hall meetings and people are just coming out 
saying such positive things about things they're seeing in the city and improvements that they're seeing. I mean, it's not perfect yet, but it's certainly uh, heading in the right direction. Yeah, we got another event coming up. I just want to um, push our greenhouse. We're having a flower show at the uh, oh, greenhouse wow. located on 142nd Street right there in Washington Park. They, The mayor has put like over a hundred thousand dollars into this greenhouse recently, right. correct? Yes, and, and not to go ahead. Not to mention, you can get free organic vegetables yeah. at our greenhouse. Yeah, we wow. have an aquaponics uh, project there that uh, will give you organic vegetables free to the residents. Um, this event will be held on May 9th at 11 a.m. Uh, it's a flower show. Uh, I believe it's a senior event. You must register at the Parks and Recreation Office. And the number there is 391-8474. Uh, the space is limited, so I, I believe that 75 people or so that can uh, accommodate, be accommodated in the greenhouse. So early, sure you early registration recommended. Oh, yes. <laughs> Most definitely. That's wonderful to hear. Also, we want to remind our listeners and viewers that on April 18th, we'll have the State of the City Address taking place at Ameristar Casino. And that does start at 1130, and you can pre-register by calling the Lakeshore Chamber at 219-931-1000. So if you want to hear more about all the great things that are happening in the city of East Chicago, celebrating those wonderful things, come out to the State of the City Address. I, I got to I gotta say this before the day's end, you know. We're pushing this I Love My City project, you know. It, it, we want residents in East Chicago to take pride back in their city. Uh, there's a lot of great things happening. And um, if you see little signs uh, all over the city, it says, I love my city. It's in the local businesses. We have bumper stickers. Um, we will be having a, an unveiling of a, a new street sign that says, I love my city. Fantastic. Coming soon. So uh, we'll be putting those around parks, around hospitals, around schools. You know, we'll be looking forward to that. We do have one caller, and uh, I didn't really pay attention, so I do apologize to our caller. MX on line one. Good morning, MX. You're on with the City of East Chicago show. Uh, good morning. Good job with the fiber optic. We were in the tower gang. We ran fiber optic called the backbone at Inland Steel in 95 and 96. But there's, <clears throat> there's a real concern to me that goes deep, deep down. In 1982 of May, I was called up at home. I worked at Inland Steel. I was a field force boilermaker. I was called up to go to the bridge collapse on Klein Avenue. If you go to MX Cartoons, there's a Mimi photoshopped with the crack in the pad. The video is posted above the Mimi. It's from the History Channel. And what what worries, what had happened, the pad had cracked. Um, MX, also, do you have a question or concern for the City of Chicago show? Yes. I okay. got a very much concern. That bridge that Fig is going to come in with it should be built out of structural steel because the ground there is always moving. When the new bridge was put up... Okay. We appreciate your, your for, um, for comment. For two years, and I watched it expand till they took it down. Okay. So it's, it's a big safety, huge issue, and you don't want your residents with a car going over that if it's made of cement. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Okay. And, uh, you know, we'll have to save that for another show. Yes, I'm sure yes. that with what happened in Florida, they're making sure they take extra care when they're building the bridge in East Chicago. Yes. Unfortunately, it's almost like the day after 9-11 was probably the safest day to fly because it, it, now we're on high alert. We will not let this happen again. Exactly. So, but Before the show ends, I just want to throw one thing out there. Block Stadium is under massive renovation and it's coming out awesome i drive by it every day yeah. and be looking forward to some interesting things happening in the very near future right, that's that. about a four or five million dollar project again when's uh, the completion date on this it's sometime soon i'm not Where sure people for the summer project. do we expect it to well, be open this summer or we will be playing ball this year i'll okay. tell you that we'll be playing ball this year yes. and and it's going to be like a minor league like the real cat stadium or yeah. local teams we can't say nothing yet you can't? oh my goodness no surprise coming soon you know they host the city of chicago show and i don't even get <laughs> let in on the secret huh? uh, once, once the mic's <laughs> off we'll let you know okay. yeah, and, I, and i think you know again just projects two brand new community centers at about three million dollars each uh one on each side of each side of town 
total reconstruction of Columbus Drive. Uh, there's going to be a new bridge coming up across uh, Alter, uh, Alder Street Pedestrian Bridge. Um, really? uh, Guthrie Street, total reconstruction of, of Guthrie Street this year. Uh, you know, senior housing facility, a $30 million uh, development project. Uh, over 208. And the closure uh, units. building is coming down. The closure building is coming down. So I mean, you just you just have to look around. It's you be look a whole around. New Chicago. <laughs> I want to say pardon our dust, right? From even our <laughs> development point of view, we just say pardon our dust. That's a fantastic thing to talk about, Kevin. Any final things on IT? Um, no, just looking forward to uh, uh, taking advantage and utilizing our investment and watching it grow with the uh, security, you know, uh, public safety that we're we're continuing with the city. In uh, as well as the communication opportunities with our uh, our fiber network or their services. That's so, amazing. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, you've been listening to the City of East Chicago show. We want to thank our cameraman, Ryan, back there for uh, making sure that you, the citizens of East Chicago, are able to view this on the East Chicago uh, TV channel. So stay tuned. Coming up next, it's Veterans View, our award winning veterans programming here on WJOB. AM 1230 and 104.7 FM. Goodbye. Do you want